And good Saturday morning, October the 14th, uh, 2023. Welcome to beautiful Waynesville, North Carolina in uh, the Jonathan Crompton Show. Uh, I'm David, uh, uh, along with uh, the godfather, Chuck Fiebernitz, down in Winston-Salem. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Okay. Uh, oh, this, yes, you are doing very well. Well, <laughs> we're going to jump on. Here, let's just jump right into this thing this morning. The, we've got an hour, and we might go a few minutes longer today because uh, there's just a whole lot of things to talk about uh, that are more than, than the football game. And uh, if you if you guys will indulge me, and I know you've got some things that you want to talk about, which I go down our list. Uh, the what an environment in C.E. Weatherby Stadium last night. Uh, hold on, David. Uh, hold on. Let's get the ad advertisers. Here's, here's. Orchard coffee. coffee. How many, what cup are you on? This technically is like. So I have one, one and a half, one and a half. Down Does that coffee taste really good this morning? Coffee always tastes good. Okay. Let me say that. So uh, Orchard Coffee, uh, come see us down here at, at Crompton's Auto Mart, CromptonAuto.com. We've got a just a ton of, of vehicles, good credit, bad credit. Uh, doesn't make a difference. Just put your application in online. Come see us in person. Uh, our friends at Sutton and Sons Antiques, and, and, uh, and we'll go through all this stuff in detail in a little bit uh, with our sponsors. But... Uh, uh, I will say this on my way to my seat last night uh, before kickoff, uh, I had three people stop me and say uh, they had gone to Orchard Coffee and how much they love it. And, and not just the product, but the, the fact that uh, it, it, the service, the kindness, uh, the cleanliness. And uh, so uh, uh, thank you guys for, for, uh, working with our sponsors. But anyway, let's get back to this before we get into to, to some football. Uh, what an environment. Uh, uh, the community uh, on, on both sides. There's, again, as I've said uh, all week, I've said it in person. I've said it in radio interviews that people have, I don't know why they call me, uh, you know, these radio shows and, and, and things from all over the South. And and I tell people because uh, I know you're more easily accessible than me. The the and you, uh, and you uh you no, got this. The uh, uh this rivalry is unmatched. Uh, no yeah. matter what side you're on, no matter again, you, you want to win. That's why you play. But no matter what side you're on, no matter win, lose, or draw, uh, there's nothing in America like like this place in this game. Nowhere. No. Uh, uh, our cheerleaders uh, last night were, were magnificent. Mm -hmm. Our band, in both bands, playing the national anthem last night when they play together, that's emotional. In 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 uh, both bands, uh, the uh, I can't say enough about the Big T Club and what they did in during the week. But and I want to talk about our parents, uh, your your parents, the Spirit Week, the bonfire last week that well, started it all off. Well, and the parents getting uh, every day after practice, whether it's a, a meal or ice cream or something for the, the players. Um, I mean, it just all around just awesome. I mean, it really it really was the the support we get. Well, yeah, is, that is just like is from unmatched. the bonfire uh, yeah. on. You know, yeah. the, the effort, the money, the time that, that people put into it. The moms and the dads, your team moms are phenomenal. Yep. Your yep. team moms are phenomenal. And uh, I'm going to give you just a minute. Uh, stadium set up and the people at the stadium. Yep. And and this you just don't show up and do that. No, God, no. They, Dude, this week, I don't care what anybody says. On my end, being the head coach, is it's always stressful. But it's like it was stress-free compared to what – Administration all the way down. I mean, well, one also oh. Chambers, dude. That was being the athletic director and the coordinator, having to get ready for practice, but making sure all the behind the thing, uh, behind the scenes stuff set up. 
Our principal. The, the, it just all around. But uh, the uh, when you know you've got a great support staff and a great team around you is one when your principal and his father are cleaning up the field, helping last night, tremendous. But then you get a text from 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 my guy Jody Ward. Uh, he's also our volleyball coach. Can you just we, one. We have the best breakfast club. I don't care what anybody says. We do. We got the best breakfast club every morning, seven thirty. Chambers office, great time, right? It's we just we have a blast, right? But we we actually we care about each other, all of us. We support each other on all from all sports. And then Jody texted last night saying, "Man, clean up this field. Every bit of this is worth it because of what you guys were able to do. That means the world to me and he our was staff." Special. The because, people. Yeah, well, and, and well, the day before, he's at North Henderson coaching volleyball, right? And so that's the stuff that that's yeah. why that's why we we're, we have something special going on at Tuscola. We really do, um, and it's not just one person; it's all yeah, around. It's Teach, teachers emailing us last night talking about how proud they were of us, stuff like that. That on a Friday night, you, they have better things that they can do on a Friday, but they show up to our games, they support us. They're rushing the field with the with the students and the fans. What, where else does that happen? It, it, you know I mean, honestly, and that that's the stuff that's that makes us a unique place to be. And uh, you know, we're we're all excited to be a part of it. And last night was just another, you know, yep. another win along the way. And uh, the Great American Rivalry, uh, we're th- this rivalry, Chuck, is the only one that they come to every year. There's a reason. Yeah, there's a reason. And and I can't I, you know uh, as as a guy who served and good morning Craig I see you on there and, and I served with uh, with 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 uh, Craig Goforth uh, as a guy who served and a guy who grew up in a military family whose father uh, gave everything uh, to see our military there and and the respect that everybody shows our military all your the former players that you never got to see last night that were in the stands that came from all over the country to come to this game and so many of them are veterans yeah. that came up and just introduced herself to me and wanted me to tell you hello uh the waynesville police department uh haywood county sheriff's department waynesville fire department the haywood county rescue squad and ems uh it, it was just uh uh just a hell of an environment. Well, yeah, and that goes and, that it's, it doesn't happen. It's, it's, yeah, it's, we don't just show up and play. The behind the scenes stuff from the whole community on both sides it was, was tremendous. And if and if we had not have won the game, it's we would still game. be sitting here talking about this right now because it's it again. Uh, and and what about your principal? What about our principal? I don't even know if there's words. Yeah, no. I mean, this, like I said, I've said it plenty of times. I wouldn't. I would I would not rather coach and be under somebody than him. I mean, honestly, he he supports everybody, not just football, but not even just sports. Everybody in that school, he supports like no other, has everybody's back, wants the best for every student, every teacher, every coach. So it's um you know, what other principal shows up early on road games at like five o'clock? <laughs> you know, I mean that's just once again. That shows you that shows you what, what we're building and for the long haul. And it's not just for one or two years. We're building this for years to come. Um, and it, it's it's fun to be a part of. So, again, thank you to the community. Look, thank the, the, the folks from Canton that came over. Oh, yeah. When when, when I got to the, you know, Chuck, you know, he was late, there at like 10 in the morning. No, I was there at three oh five. Mm. And, they, and they didn't open the gate, but then they but but they saw me there, and I had Chris Reddick. Thank you, Chris is doing a documentary of all day yesterday, from seven in the morning until after in the, the till the bus left the stadium last night. Thank you, Chris. But when when uh, I was sitting there, and they just they felt sorry for me, so they let me go in and park. So I was there at three o five, but I will tell you. Uh, uh, the 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 other side was full of red and black mm-hmm. by four thirty. Uh-huh. Yeah, you weren't. Yeah, y'all weren't there by four thirty. Uh, what support? What support? What's you know? It's it it, it is unmatched. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you to everybody, and I uh, and I know that uh, from the, the teachers and yep. the, so uh, what an environment. Now. Uh, 
let's talk a little football. Mm-hmm. But can I do one thing before we before we before we start getting into the game? You just you just did. No, this is important. This is the game. Okay. All right, Chuck. Everything last night. Uh, and, you know, we're gonna we're gonna spend some time talking about Mr. West as okay. as the show goes on. But I want to tell you, uh, up front, Chuck, uh, David Bowman, left tackle. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Odie Garrido, Garrido, number 64, mm-hmm. left guard. Uh, our center, Stephen Brooks. Uh, our right guard, uh, Jackson Sutton. Mm-hmm. Uh, our right tackle, who I love to watch. It just he he's a guy that 50 years from now he's going to be back up here and still uh uh man man josh kruger our right tackle i think they look well, they, they, here's look, the deal i think that chuck and, and john and coach i think they took it personal well yeah but that's what i was getting at we we had a a deal challenged them all week challenged them before the game we had yet to put four full quarters together on the on all and all aspects of the game, we we'll challenge them because I'm not dumb. I know what all of our whole staff is. Everybody understood and thought, oh, they're just a second half team. They don't play in the first half, so we we've challenged all year, challenged all year. But they it clicked when we play four quarters. Now the kids see, oh, there you go. Because yeah. remember, we're a passing team. We're not a running team, right? Seven minute drive, twelve play, seven minute drive touchdown to, to start the second half. I'm gonna be me today. Then we get our defense does a great job getting us the ball back with a turnover, and then the reality is, now we get the ball with right at ten minutes, and we score with two minutes and eleven seconds to go. And guess what? We didn't throw the ball one time. But remember, Tuscola is a passing team because Coach Crompton. That's what he does. No, my God, we we do what we want to do. And what we want to do is each week is our game plan. And our kids played a hell of a game. I don't care what anybody says. Say what you want about me. But I'm I'm, I'm going to let everybody know how great our kids played last night. That's a fact. They answered the challenge. They they pushed people off the line of scrimmage. And let we ran for 241 yards last night. And we weren't – and it wasn't trying to get big play runs either. It was we're running in the A-gap. Stop it. A-gap. Stop it. A-gap. Stop it. And our kids played tremendous well, those answering kids, that challenge. I'm going to throw it to you, Chuck, because you love offensive linemen, and those five right. guys were, were special last night. I'm glad that uh, you you uh, gave the offensive linemen's name because, yes, they, they played in uh, you know, a, an outstanding football game. They answered the call. They did. On the opening kickoff. Mm-hmm. Because let's talk about, and I was going to tell you, Jonathan. First, let me say this: is I want to I want to thank you for uh, respecting the rivalry. No talk, no paper clippings, no articles, no calling out your opponent. That's disrespecting this great rivalry. And your kids answered it on the first play of the game in live action on the opening kickoff. To the we man, had it, or Christopher Wells kicked a fantastic kick on the open kickoff. We had a chance to was he down, not? Was we had he, a chance to go down and recover that one. I was I didn't. We didn't know if it was going to bounce or not. We didn't know if they were going to try to run over and catch it. Just in, in all honesty, and when he kicked it, I was like, oh, oh, bleep, we might recover this thing. You, know, I mean, just in pure honesty, and I was going, holy crap, but. I'm glad we didn't overshoot our coverage to try to go get it. That's the thing. So the well, kids played smart last night. To you, yeah, to you, yes. You, in all phases of the game, your kids were prepared, and that article was the one that k- took you over the top. Let's be honest, okay? You were prepared for this game before that article came out. So I want to thank you, Jonathan, for m- teaching your kids to respect the rivalry. To the other side, zip it. Because if you go ask any of our players, 
what we do once again it's not it's not it's not me it's not our coaching staff kids have bought into what we're trying to do is from the culture standpoint we're going to win with class we're going to lose a class we win put your helmet on let's go shake hands we lose put your helmet on let's go shake hands look them in the eye shake their hand and if it, if, if we're on the the not so fun side then we figure out a way to go back to work and 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 change that that's what that's that's what we do class all the way so they're that that's what we're that's what we're preaching and that's what we're getting to so the kids understand i don't care if we win we'll run on monday if we're unclassy about it and it's just we're we're going to show people who we really are right losing losing is the easy part if that makes sense winning and being respectful in the win is the hard part it, it is so that's that's the stuff that we're getting it's it's coming together each week and i'm having a blast being a part of it i really am All right so go ahead chuck yeah but from the game standpoint that opening bells that's mm-hmm. like like mike tyson and throwing a haymaker oh yeah and, and then you put, you know the kid deserves a special award because they wanted to shut your mouth up that was what the comment was allowed by for this kid to say, and that's that's wrong. Coach coaches have a uh, you, you got to be there and say, oh, that's not a quote. We're not going to say that. Or before you even get interviewed, be humble. You know, don't say stuff that's going to other kids have to, you know, cash that check. But that kid hit to me when I saw it was the answer to the question. Are you going to respond? Walker Bolden. Have your mouth shut up. Oh, and Walker. Walker number, yep, number 26, Walker Bolden. Uh, just uh, heat-seeking missile. He had had enough. <laughs> and I think, honest. Chuck, again, I go back. I'm, I'm, I love those people. I love all of them. Charlie Metcalf, who's on that staff. I'll talk to Charlie in a little bit. I'm I as, love Charlie. I'm as close to Charlie. Uh, I've known Charlie since I was 12 years old. He was my first football coach. And there's no human being on the face of the earth. If I can live and, and walk the earth like Charlie Metcalf, I'm, I, the world is better for it. I'm, I'm with you, I'm, and I'm, I'm not being rude Yeah, to both of you. You know what? I don't give a damn. This is our show. Yeah. So, this so is about our kids, yeah. about our community, because by God, we deserve this today. When I so, say we, not me, the kids yeah. deserve this recognition. Yeah. The community deserves this recognition. Yeah. Hey, bottom line is if the shoe's on the other foot, they're not talking about us. So we're yeah. So uh just to Walker Bolden played outstanding, but there's something, Chuck, that I want to make sure that it's we before we, you know, because you know we're gonna start talking about Gavin and we're gonna start talking about Jed. Mm-hmm. Uh but little things to me uh are are you pay attention to and and uh, Jeb Garner, 17, is a senior. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was not able to play in his senior game against uh, the uh, – in the rivalry last night. Mm-hmm. And then when you guys came out of the locker room and were walking with you, the captains to, to go down there, I looked up and I saw your guys and I saw you. Y'all have – y'all do the same thing every week. And I, and I, and I saw him in his letter jacket. Walking beside you, and, and you you had your arm around him, and I thought that's awesome. And then he went out on the field, and he was the one of your captains. Yeah, he was our speaking captain. He was your speaking captain. And uh, after uh, the the toss, uh, then when, and when they were coming off the field, because it was really just uh, you made a beeline for him, and and, and I'm not going to ask you what you said because that's not our business. But uh, you stood there for a minute. And you just hugged him. Yeah. Well, he he's a definition of not that, Tuscola football, but Tuscola. He he's that's a, special. He he makes it to every sporting event outside of football that he can make it in the student section. Cares about the school. Cares about this community. Um, I mean, he is the literal definition of what Tuscola is. And it you know obviously football injuries happen and and. Uh, Stuff like that, and you, obviously you never want to see it happen. But it's sure as crap not to a senior the week before um, the game. 
Um, and it was an unfortunate situation, but I mean, he's a he's as big a part of this team oh. as anybody, regardless of an injury or not. So he he deserved to be there last night and deserved to be the one leading us out there. And um, you know, and his his mom and dad are tremendous individuals and have supported us like no other since the day I showed up. So two hundred and one days ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot's happened in two hundred and one days. And uh so anyway, but the the back to the game. Uh uh, I think from seeing and, and Chuck, Chuck and I had talked about this all, all week, kind of privately, not on our show, but just privately. Uh, there comes a time uh, in 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 life, and there comes a time in athletics when when you go, okay, all right, I've I've, I've had enough. I, I have had enough and I'm tired of, you know, and, and we're either going to man up or not. And every, you, you out, fist, again, I, I try, I'm, you, you guys just lined up and yeah. whipped them. You yeah. lined up on both sides of the ball and you were more physical. Your, your guys were more physical. Your guys, you, uh, just, uh, I, I get goosebumps yeah, because we, we played a great game. Because people, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, talk about the week in preparing well, and and kind of getting the mindset. It, it was it's, see that's that's the thing. Right? Like I got told them, I played in this game. I know what this game's about. But the reality is how you win the game. It's uh, from the football standpoint and the player standpoint. It's just a game. Let the community. Be do the hooping and hollering because it is fun as hell. But from the coaching and the player standpoint, it's another game on the schedule. Let's go take care of our business. We can celebrate after. We can't get too high, can't get too low. And they they responded to that. We had a arguably the week before could have been. I'm going to say it's a flip of coin. Which week was the best week of practice all season? And that's a good thing to be able to have it coming at this time. Those weeks of practices where they're they're getting better and better as we go. Um, that, that that's how you do that. You you don't change what we do just because of who we're playing. Yes, we know what's at stake. I'm not an idiot, but it's also you have to play. You have to understand you're dealing with sometimes 14 to 18 year old kids. So we have to make sure we stay the course, and and we stayed we stayed the course. I mean, if you go right after the opening kickoff, they get the ball. It's big third down. They convert. Cool. Eight seconds. On to the next play. Is what it is. I told them before the game. This game is won or lost by emotion. This one specific game, won or lost by emotion. Your emotions are going to get up here, then they're going to go here. They're going to go up here, they're going to go here. I said, let me be the emotional one on the sideline. Just stay the course. Okay, they got a big play. Cool. Our defense bowed their neck, kick a field goal. By the way, they got a phenomenal field goal kick. Oh, he's unbelievable. And, but hey, you know what? Field goal. Cool. Yeah. Well, guess what we do? Drive it right down their throat. First play of the game. And this is where, and yes, we'll talk a lot about this in a, in a minute, but this is where people don't realize how special Jed West is from a football IQ standpoint. Okay. He's a tremendously smart individual. You do know that I'll give him like two and three plays. NFL teams don't do that. College teams don't do that. He has free reign in our offense to check an audible to plays, pre designed plays each week. The first play was an audible. QB draw, audible, go, do you. I trust you. Our team trusts you. We trust each other, right? So now this is where we get to that point in the season that we have – now we're – as a high school team, we're audibling plays. And it's not just to the same play each time. That's the beautiful thing because our kids have learned our system, right? And, and I that, that, but that, So we go down, drive down the field and score. Hey. Once again, emotions. They they kick a field goal. Great. But we had the momentum now because they got a big play. We bought our neck. They have to kick a field goal. Right? Yes, extra point gets blocked. Yeah, things happen. On to the next one. Let's go. Right? We go down and score. Cool. Let's go for two. Trust our guys. Now let's get a two-point conversion. Those things are what was special last night. Back and forth early, ride the wave, and then right before halftime, the heat-seeking missile, Walker, but here's the thing. What it was set up by is what you won't see 
you just see the hit, excuse me, is Amos number two, Amos Rich on the right side, our, our number one on kickoff, like all the way out. Yes. He makes the guy cut back inside because of his trusting, his technique, and his coaching. And he folded back inside. The guy sees him, cuts back right into Walker. That's called playing team football. And it was tremendous last night on that sense. So we get that. We get momentum going into halftime. And this is the definition of our team. Ode Grito. Where's glasses? His glasses broke. I love broke. that kid. His glasses broke. He can't see. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, Chuck, I mean, no, no, no. I'm serious. They threw his glasses to the sideline. He well, played, was that? Oh, oh I, no, I was wondering they, what that was. He played three plays and couldn't see. But guess what? I'm not coming out of the game, coach. He didn't. So at halftime, me being me, I did the – he put his glasses on and said, oh, did true or false? Am I holding up fingers? He said, well, yeah, I've got one eye that I can see out of. We're good. You know, being funny. And – but – he that that's what our team's about. They play for each other. That was, in a nutshell, that was the first half in the sense of they get a big play, we bow our neck, we drive it right down their throat. All right. Yes, they block an extra point. Kudos to them. Okay, cool. They go up. What they go up uh, ten to six. Cool. We don't flinch. It's not what we do. Go down. Now it's fourteen to ten. Now we're in a ball game. We get ball at half, and here's the part that I find the most fun. At halftime, every game, our kids know something's coming. Coach Gromden's going to come up with some random stuff, right? Coach Chambers is going to come up with some stuff on defense. And that's why if you look at my game plan, it's so big because I have areas to write. I, 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 I like to write it down so I make sure when we adjust, I don't mess up the call. And our tight ends, number three, Bridger Jones, 19, Zaid Jackson. The way that they adjusted last night with the things we added at halftime that we had not done yet in the run game, you can't ask for you can't ask for much better because we drew it up at halftime and said, here's the play, <clears throat> here's the name, here's how we're going to block it. And guess what we did the very first play of the second half? One of those plays. And it worked to perfection because they trust our system now. They trust our coaching, but better, more importantly, they trust each other. And that, that's how we started the second half. We were going to come out with a seven-minute drive and run it down their throat and essentially play the uh, old uh, – what was it? Three yards in the climb. Well, no, but what was it? Um, the boxing one offense in old-school basketball, wasting time. Yeah, yeah. We were going to trust our guys and – Run, run, run. Marshawn Lynch. Can't say it on here because it's <laughs> Marshawn Lynch doesn't have a good mouth. But run through somebody's face over and over and over and over and over and over again. What do you think I told him before the game? We're going to run through them over and over and over and over again because that's the mindset in this game. And our kids answered the bell. Johnson, during the week leading up to the big game, <clears throat> talk about – your mindset as far as why you kind of put a, a lid on your program and lock things down and didn't let them get speak publicly and everything. What was the mindset with that? Because that's what good teams do personally. And people can disagree with that. But they're 14 to 18 year old kids. They're emotional. They want this one specific game more than anything on both sides. And I get it. But if, if you give them bulletin board material, you you don't – that doesn't make any sense to me. You know what I mean? It, it just doesn't. Um, they're going to say things – like I said, let, let me be that guy. Let, that, I, I, should have, I should be that person for a teenager. Um, and uh, they understand. They – okay. You know, that type of stuff. Going to the JV game. Just be smart. Come to the sideline. Hang out with us. Don't need to be in the stands, running around. Anything they people that aren't playing in the game don't have anything to lose. Football players have everything to lose when it comes leading up to a game. Just come to the sideline, hang out. Our sideline was packed for the JV game with varsity players. Our stands were packed. Yeah, but I'm I'm just yeah. with varsity football players. They're just all on the sideline. I'm fine with that. Because at least I know that you're 
buying into what we're doing. Excellent. And and the, uh, Gavin Langley, uh, he was a warrior. Uh, man, uh, a gap all night long. Yeah. And never never flinched. Uh, what was that? You, you were talking about put your cleats in the ground and go north and south. Yeah. And uh, was was uh, talk a little bit about uh, Gavin last night. Well, no, everybody. And then yeah, the I, one the one thing with Gavin is last night the game plan was one cut downhill, one cut downhill. Let's go. Um, and he, he did a really really good job of that. I mean, he did. And our other running back, Cooper, and that's what I was telling Cooper yep. Williamson, number four, I said, Coop, this is nothing to do with how you've practiced all week. But right now, we're going to run the ball in the, the same spot, 15 plays in a row, and I don't want to put your body through that beating. Yes. yes, sir, Coach. That's the definition of a good teammate, being the first one to celebrate with Gavin when we get a first down to waste the clock. So – that was that was tremendous. Hey, at a certain point, it's a really fun thing when you can just look at your QB and go, same play, like just run it again. You know what I mean? Instead right. of having to run it again. And when we got to that point, that's when that's when you kind of know. And um this was the most out of every game I've played or coached. Leading on Friday morning, this is the most calm that I've been about a game. And just, I'll be honest. And I and I told her, and Houston McCracken said that all week. He was like, guys, I, I don't know, but I've got a calm sense about this week. And during practice, you know, during the whole week, you don't really know. And um, Friday morning, kind of crazy day at school, pep rally day, all this stuff. So I know pep rally, phenomenal. The other day, awesome. They did a great job with that. Um, but just told them, it's like, man. It's going to go well tonight. And we ran the ball a lot better than anybody ever thought we could. Offensively, that's uh, – yes, well, first of all, I'm included. I didn't think you could run the football like that. Obviously, the other side didn't either. Well, like I told the Asper Citizen Times, your pick was wrong. Their pick's always wrong with Tuscola. But I'm going okay. to support my guys, and I'm going I'm to – that's fine. But like I told somebody last night, because of how I, I support our team and our players and our community and our, our school, don't don't take my confidence as a slight to your insecurity. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm confident in, in as hell in our school, our administration, our football team, obviously, but just from all around. And it just, you know, it showed last night, not just for myself, but with everything. Did did your defensive staff see something in uh you know in the in the personnel on the offensive side of, of uh Pisca and which designed up putting ungodly pressure? I mean you come with blitzes from everywhere. Did you see something in film or was it we're going to pressure them and see how they react? What was the school of thought there with your defense? Well no, I, I think Coach Chambers did a, a great job putting the defensive game plan together and we were going to adjust at halftime and do a couple things. And finally we just looked at each other and was like, let's not overthink it. They're not adjusting. Let, let's ride with what we got. If we need to adjust the middle, in the middle of the third quarter, we will, mm -hmm. but let's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because if we know somebody's not going to, not going to adjust, why would we adjust at that moment? Um, and uh, he did a great job all week. The whole defensive staff did a great job all week of having our players ready with not just blitzes, but pressure just by the D-line and schematically how we were going to cover certain guys. And like I said, we only gave up really one quote-unquote big play. I know there was that touchdown bang-bang play. You know, I was talking to the ref after halftime. I was like, dude, I'm not mad at you. I just want to know what you saw. And he just described it, and I was like, Cool. Because the reality is, you're human. It's a bang bang play. You got to make a split second decision. We don't have replay. Okay, you know. So if you count that one, two, two positive plays all night. If you think about it, the, that's what we, we we played really well last night. Um, and 
once after the, I guess the first, it might've been the first, maybe second drive for them. I think it was first. They went into, I take it back. The first play of the game, they had one of the, like their fullback, essentially a tailback. That instantly told me they were going to try to get, I know they had four wide that first play, but they were going to go heavy and try to run the ball. So it played right into our, our hand defensively. I mean, they, it, it did. We've held the past couple weeks. I don't even know if we've given up a total of 100 rush yards. Now, it might be exaggerated a little bit, but I, I don't know because there was negative against North. Wasn't that many positive against East, and last night wasn't a lot. So defensively, the past three weeks, outside of a total of five plays, we've played our ass off. It's just the that's the nicest way I can say it in the cleanest way because we have from top to bottom outside of five plays. Well, you know what? Five plays over three games, I, I'll take those odds. We just – when the five plays happen, obviously we got to we got to be there. Um, but he, he put a great game plan together. Kids executed the piss out of it. They were excited to, to do it. They were excited during the game. Um, guys were not wanting to sub out. Even when they were tired, they did not want to come out. So that it was it was fun to watch defensively. I was just on the defensive headset listening, going, "Nice, cool." I didn't have to say I didn't have to say anything. All right, cool, good call. Yeah, do it again. You know, that, from the head coach standpoint, that's when it's fun because you just sit back and enjoy that side of it. Right. So uh, we kind of blacked out a little bit. The this might I I hope you didn't answer this, but you've you've ran a chance I didn't a gap a gap a gap in the second half you just pounded at him and then you get a 21 to 10 lead you get the ball back and you're going for uh, another six points for a quarterback former quarterback who is trained to see things instantly because you got to make adjustments immediately in audibles Mm -hmm. what is what is going through your mind because you know you quarterbacks you want to throw it 100 times a game what is what was the reason you said I'm going to um, – the rest of this game, I'm going to run it here, pound, pound. Well, we knew going into the game where we were going to attack in the run game as far as schematics. Um, but you can never predict that you're going to be able to milk the clock with right at 10 minutes to go in the game. Um, so as soon as we got the ball back after a huge turnover by our defense, and by the way, also recovered by our center. Um was he not special last yeah, night? No, he was. Was Mr. Brooks not um, just so that when that happened, I was like, you know what? They've got two timeouts. Let's make them burn them. That was the conversation. That was that was the whole conversation. Let's make them burn them. We've been running the ball very well, and then that that's where it gets fun for me because then we can signal on plays, and then Jed knows instantly if we get this, we can go to this. If we do get this, we can go to this. So we can he can make us right in a lot of situations. Um, obviously, not every situation because that's football. They're allowed to game plan too. But he he knows exactly when we can you know if we get this look, here's your two or three plays to go to. If we get this look, here's your two or three plays. So then, after a while, I was like, okay, well they're not going to burn the timeouts. Hey, slow down a little bit. Let's back down. Let's snap it with two seconds. Let's go ahead and get into four minute offense because we're getting. Five yards, six yards, three yards, four yards, five yards. Well, we hardly went to third down on that last drive. Um, so that 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 was the mindset. It was it was kind of a on the run of, huh? They're not going to adjust to this. Now they brought in their big boy. Um, I think it was sixty eight or sixty nine. I was like, well, I trust our dudes. Yeah, he's six five three. 10 or something like that, good-looking athlete. But you know what? So are our kids. And that wasn't going to change. And that that was what was fun, being able to sit there and go, <laughs> we're going we're to be able we're, – we're actually – and the referee, you know it's funny when the referee comes by and goes, Coach, really good – during the game, really good job just pounding it right now. Because they, if they, you know, and that that's something we can do. We can we've shown we can go run heavy if we need to. We can go pass heavy if we need to. But we're not going to go pass heavy with up two scores with nine minutes to go, and we're running the ball as effectively as we need to. Right. It, and and let me 
I don't want to move on to next week until I talk about this. Uh, Jed was special last night. And I just, yeah. I just, you know, the kid didn't get here till August the 1st. And I know you've thrown a ton at this young oh, man. Please make sure you, for all those NC prep people that create rumors, he came here August 1st legally. <laughs> now, man, listen, are you ready? You ready for this? Once again. I, there's a lot of things people can say about me. If they're not talking, we're not doing something right. Yeah, but 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 well taken, Chuck. Well taken. But but before but, you, but home before you say this, I'm 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 gonna say this. Some people will disagree with me. I don't care. I know what I see, and I and I know. Um. It, it, this this is the cool part for me to be able to say this, from the player and into the coach standpoint. One. Him. Picking number eight was really cool for me. I'm not gonna that that's that's a selfish thing. I but, know what that means. But what we ask him to do just every week, and I'm talking about I put stuff on him that you that when I when I talk to colleges about him, they're going, uh, our our kids don't even do that. I know. I know. He's that special. He is the best number eight that have, has played there. Now, I, I, that is including myself, and I was pretty damn good. He is the best number eight that has put on a Tusco uniform. He is. And I love being able to say that. I, I honestly mean, I love being able to say that because of what I ask him to do day in, day out, and he doesn't flinch, and he understands it. And he takes it and he runs with it. Um, that that's really cool to be able to say and and mean it and not just be like oh you know whatever. No, the kids have learned. I don't. There, things aren't just words with me. That that's really really cool for me to be able to say. He will be. And I don't care what anybody says. I know he's only here for one year, but you know what? He is the best one to put on that uniform. Let me ask this question, Jonathan, because it was his first time in the big game. Did he, he played pretty damn big, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. And he played he, – and we and, – and our conversation on Tuesday's show was how would Jed play being in its first, first game of this rivalry, first time, would the stage be too big? Did you help him out at all about what the stage was going to be like, what expectations? Guys, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He, he's different. He is. He's a dude. He's different. He is. Um, mentally, just he's cut from a different cloth. And it's fun for me. Hell, I wish I had it for four years. You know what I mean? Now right. I, get, I get Bo, and Bo's going to be Bo's going to be really good. Bo's going to be special. But just in general, it's he's just different. Um, and the best part is our team, you'd never know that he wasn't here as a freshman. From the locker room standpoint, you'd never know it. Um, that's what makes us, you know, I know we have a 500 record, but you'd, if, you, if, if you watch the film and saw what we see, you are, you know, you're only as good as your record. You're only as good as your last game, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? There's something special going on in that locker room with those kids. Um, it's just fun to be a part of along for the ride. Now. Uh, do, we, do we have stats? I don't have them on me. I do, but I don't have them there in my locker. In the ballpark, what was the total yardage comparison between the two schools? Uh, now, I don't know. I don't know theirs off the top of my head. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Like 140 passing with a touchdown, two oh, right at 250 rushing, um, three touchdowns, two point conversion. Um, in that range. Wow. Okay. And, yep. And before we move on, because we get it, 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 we go from one to the next. Yep. Oh, it's on to the next one. And, and uh, uh, Man, I think you might have found you a long snapper. How about that little young Gentry last night again? Hey. How about Mr. Gentry, number 23? He's, he is, and and he just 
I wish he'd look at people sometimes and not smile. He hey, smiles no, too he much. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me tell you something. To the point, Canaan Gentry, C it's, it's C A N A A N, biblical name. But Canaan Gentry, I thought we were going to get to him earlier, but to shore up something and come on board, what a great job. And the, the best part is, I didn't see him snapping after practice a few weeks ago. It was Houston McCracken. I was like, hey, Coach, he, he might be pretty good. And I was like, Cannon? Really? Like, I, I, I thought he was joking. He goes, no, no, no. And, you know, Houston can long snap. He He's good. Well, he, he has no eligibility. Well, no, I know. No, but, he, <laughs> but he goes, he goes, Coach, if I work with him, we, we can we can turn him into something. I was like, do you? You know what I mean? Like, we thing is, on our staff, we trust each other. Work with him. Let's see what he can do. And for his first game snapping to be last week against East Henderson, and here's the best part. He goes, before he goes, Coach, I'm nervous. Buddy, that's a good thing. Embrace it. <laughs> no, no, no. Embrace it. Go out there, snap the piss out of the ball, embrace it. Yes, sir. And I'm on the money. You would never know that he's only snapped for two weeks. Yeah. That's the cool part. You never know this kid's only snapped, long snap for two weeks. And and uh and Christopher Well, our kicker's gonna be good. Yeah. Yep. So so Christopher Wells, uh our special I'm a I love special teams. So anyway, on to next week. Yeah. Uh boy, it's a big one again. We're traveling across the the, the mountain, no. uh across balsam, and uh this has really big implications. It's gonna be a really good football game. Two teams that are fighting for basically the same yep. thing, and uh, uh, just it never it, that, in our conference this year. There, it doesn't get easy. Nope. You just go from one to the next. It's it's uh, and you know what's Chuck Melt when I say this. It's like playing an SEC schedule when you play good teams all the time. Uh, watch him look away. Uh, when when you play those great teams every week, week in and week out, but. Uh, uh, got my question is not for not for you guys because I know you just fl you've already flipped your switch. You're ready. What do you got to do to get to get the kids? Okay, we got to we got to forget about this now. Now yep. we got to go because we got something really big important in front of us. Yeah. So so talk about the next forty eight to seventy two hours. On what you got to do, or what your you and your staff well, have to do to let's, because this is football it, wise. This next week's bigger than this normal. week. It's normal, status quo. It's normal. It's just the we're gonna go game plan here in about twelve minutes, and go better day. I know it's Monday's the teacher work day, so we're not in school. We'll practice in the afternoon like normal at three o'clock. Um. Just got to go. We, I told him three weeks ago what was at stake. We got one game at a time. Need a little help some along the way. We've already got a little bit of it. We've taken care of the, the previous two that we need to take care of. Now it's the next one. If you know, bottom line is we don't. We'll be sitting home in November. That's just the, that's the brutal honesty. So that's how. Be honest with them. Don't don't lie to them. Don't just let them know if that one's over. Great. Let's get back in the training room, get back in the weight room, get back in the – making sure we're rehabbing, get, get ready for practice, make sure we're studying what we're supposed to be studying, and and go from there. And I'm I'm confident that our, our players will do that. That's because they understand it. We Nothing changes week to week with us as far as the process of what we're doing. Um, so it's just – it's on to the next one. Jonathan, I have a question. It's, it's football related, but we, nobody talks about this, and a lot of fans wonder about it. You got headsets on. Mm -hmm. Tell me the good question. Tell me the things that go on inside the headset. Sometimes right. emotional, and some are just cool, calm, and collective. What goes on inside those headsets? With us, a lot of communication. I've been a part of places that's not so not so constructive, right? Um, we know what we're going to do. 
Like we we have a plan leading up. We, and like I tell the players, visualize the game. Visualize what you think and can logically think what their adjustments will be if we do X, Y, Z, right? And try to play out and think ahead. And I think we do a pretty good job of that, and we're getting better each week. Offensively, it's very calm. Um, Houston, um, Coach McCracken's up in the box telling us what the secondary is going to do if they're in a three-down front, a four-down front, a five-down front where the techniques are, does a really good job communicating that so we know which way we're trying to run, um, where the overhangs are, and call the play. Our signal guy signals it in. I'm not going to say who for other teams that watch. Um, Back to the CIA. And first. then uh, – No. But, you know, it just, I mean, I'm saying it just – and it's, hey, you know, coach, whoever, what, what, do you, what do you see in here? What do you like? They'll say it in. Cool. Let's run this. So there's not a lot of. It's actually very. It's a lot more calm than you think, for at least for us. Um, and then defensively, guys do really good, a really good job communicating. I'll switch over to the defensive side, and uh, kind of throw my two cents in there when needed. But like I said, from day one, man, I'm, I'm gonna trust our staff. I'm gonna trust what what we have come to do, and I don't. I'm not gonna step on Coach Chambers' toes just because I'm the head coach. He. Uh, he calls a good game. He does each week, and that that's what we're so we're building here is trust in each other, trust in the systems, trust in the players, to where we can call it, take a step back while it's going on, be thinking of our next two or three calls, and that's where we're going. You know, I spent time as a catcher many years, and being able to decipher and steal signs from the third base coach. And I will tell you, it even happens on the pro and collegiate level where they have three guys standing there giving all these different signs. And if you're the opposing team, you can sit there and stand behind the quarterback's head as he's looking. Yep. And when the live guy gives them the sign, the quarterback turns his head away to the line or to the line of scrimmage. While the other ones are still going. The other two false guys are standing there still giving the signs. Boom. That's the live guy. So now oh, you know. Uh, what is. You I, I do. I do enjoy watching college football and seeing those do that. I'm like, guys, be on beat together. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> and home, they're about to snap the ball, and y'all are still. The like, live whatever. guy. The live. And, uh, stop. You know he's got to when he gives the sign and he gives it, and the quarterback starts to turn his head. The live guy's got to go stop, so the other two can stop too. Yeah. Because when you got two guys going at it and the quarterback's looking away, he's not getting the sign from them. So who they get? So you instantly look and go, those two are the faults, you know, the fake signs. Yep. There's your guy. And then you can start stealing some, you know, maybe some plays. I remember they gave maybe the hat like this or did something like that. And they threw the ball slant backside slant. So you, you don't want that to be, uh, you know, you don't want your signs to be um, picked yeah. up. I spend a life behind the plate stealing signs. So that's just a little thing from a football standpoint. When you said that those, you know, the guys were flagging them. Yeah. Jonathan, on a, you know, from a personal standpoint, uh, you know, it's a congratulations. I knew that I think this is a very important win because it, you turn the corner mm -hmm. to building your program the way you want it. And are you there? No, we, but you're building it and you're moving in the right direction. So it only gets better from here. But that game seals it. That now means Tuscola's won two in a row. And I will have to bring this up for all the people that complain. Jonathan, as a player, what are what is your record in this series? Player and coach? Player. Player. Oh, two and oh. And now you want to know as a coach, so you're undefeated. I think you take this rivalry pretty serious, don't you? I may or may not have said that to the paper last night. <laughs> Three. I'll neither confirm nor deny that. We'll see if it's printed, though. Yeah. Um, and that's stuff to, to let our kids get excited. Like I said, let me let me be the the uh, bulletin board material guy, not the players. You know what I mean? Like the, in that sense, because they're I I don't want them having to go in the community and people try to talk bad to them. Like I, I'm fine. So let me be that person. Y'all be a teenager, but 
if you want to say something like that, just say, hey, coach, I, I need this said, and I'll, hell, I'll say it. You know, because it, there's a difference in that, but that's also why I think our players have bought in because I'm going to have their back regardless. Win, lose, or draw. I'm going to have their back because I know the work that they've put in. And I see them every day at practice, see them every day in the weight room, I see what they do and how they work. Um, and so the bottom line is I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. There's nothing anybody can say to me in life that has not been said because of football. <laughs> I've just been honest. <laughs> no, and, I, and I say that like jokingly, but in all, also seriously. So I want our players to understand that when we play well, I'm going to say, yeah, we played a hell of a game. We did. Right? No, I have not lost to Pisgah in this rival game. And I can say that for another 364 more days until next year. And guess what our players can say? The same thing. So that's why that's why I am the way I am sometimes. That's fine. But you know what? Our seniors, hey, they go out, they go out 2-0 as juniors and seniors now. For the rest of their but life. They can't take that away from them. Can't. That's what's so special about this. That's what's fun because like I got told him, I said, I'm going to quote a famous movie. And I said this in the locker room <clears throat> right before the captains left. I said, no, y'all were not alive before this happened or when this happened. But I want to see if you, I want to see if you two remember the movie that seniors alone get the next, um, sorry, I was reading that. I want, uh, seniors for the next 48 minutes for the next 48 years of your life. You're going to remember this. I said, mine was 20 years ago. I still remember the plays in the game. My center, Sean Fitzgerald, sent me a picture before the game with me under center and him at center and said, hey, man, good luck tonight. That stuff. So I know, can you name the movie? Friday Night Lights? Nope. Don't you? Varsity know? Blues. There it is. Uh. Coach Kilmer. <laughs> and we we're, were joking. Pep Rally. We were joking that uh, I should grab the microphone and do the Bud Kilmer. Tonight, we play Pesca. Tonight, we beat Pesca. And then Pep Rally over like they did in Varsity Blues. You know what I mean? Uh, but that was – that. that's what's fun about it. Right? We enjoy the moment, but, hey, now it's on to the next. Yeah. And, and again, before we get off here, I, I – Again, this is about our program. It's about our community. But as a county, there's nothing in America. I don't care if it's the red and black or the black and yellow. There's nothing, no game in America. No. But, Period. But, but understand, <laughs> all of our fans, our community, we got 364 days and there's not a damn thing you can say to us. That's simple. Football side, we're on to the next. Community can have fun though. That's pretty good. I mean, that, I don't. I'm not. That, hey, that is not being. That's just the reality the situation. And and that's what's fun about a game like this, with only two schools in the county. It's going to be that way every year for whoever wins. Because yeah, we could be sitting here next year going, going Woo. exactly. Woo and that and that's part and that's of that's what's it. so cool about it. That that's what makes this special. Is it's just us two schools. Yeah. And that's what's fun. And by God, our kids answered they answered the challenge. And so let me let me ask you this. Uh, 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 are you guys uh, are you guys physical? I had to ask. I mean if I'd say so. <laughs> the I, I, say I, so. I can um, you know uh that's that's a thing that I again I know just the, the I know you. I know the, but, the, hey, listen, in your kids. But the bottom line is yeah, it was pretty you cool. gotta do what you gotta do to get your team fired up. I hey, I'm the same way. If it doesn't if it if the ball doesn't go our way last night, people are gonna say, Oh, well, you said such and such. I did. There I, in, in a game, there's always a winner and there's always a loser. But we never go anything expecting them to lose. Had no a, team does. I, I don't know any team that does. Right. But we just you got to you got to be the more prepared team. You got to be the more in the game, control your emotions team, and you can never 
quit. And that's something we don't do. Flinch. We, we, I we, have we don't quit. A Pisca, uh, loyal Pisca supporter yesterday afternoon, early afternoon, called me up <clears throat> and said, asked me, is Tuscola that stupid? No. And I, I said, no. Uh, what do you mean? It, and repeated again, is Tuscola that stupid? And I said, I, you're going to have to explain yourself because I don't know where you're coming from on this. Tuscola sent Principal Connor and Brett Chapel flowers with a little note that you're going to need this. And I, I thought. Do, who, who, who actually sent it, though? We know. No, no, I'm being serious. Who? I have no idea. It was not anybody with Tuscola. Oh, I was about to say, I have no idea. This is the first I'm hearing of it. So my response back was. Are you stupid enough to believe that Tuscola sent those? I mean, but once again, I go back to that's what's that's what's fun about a small town, two school county rivalry. Things like that. Are, this is the first I'm hearing of it. This the so I call I have CIA too now, Jonathan. Oh God! If you think your CIA is top notch? I got CIA peaks too now. <laughs> like, but My yours actually call- might be CIA. So I called my CIA investigative team. <laughs> I put my chief investigator on it. And within 30 minutes, he called me up and says, I found the person that sent it. He's not in town. He's on his way to an unknown destination to the people. But he's the same guy that sent flowers to Tuscola last, you know, the year before. I said, well, isn't that nice? I said, how did you get it confirmed? He said, well, he laughed. And he, he didn't deny it. And then when we got off the phone, he texted me, LOL. I said, well, we that's not facts. You can't say that. That's why I won't mention the name. But the silliness sometimes of people in this rivalry, this, again, I bring this up because you didn't send flowers. You didn't send flowers. You're spending your whole entire week game planning, strategic thinking getting ready for the game where others on the other side are sending flowers to try and hype their kids up if you got to do that you've lost already well on a on a different note before we end no, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, the comment reminded me and this is true good things are happening in, in all of waynesville in general um waynesville middle went and took care of their business, beat Brevard the other day. They're on to the championship this week against Macon. So good things are happening in Waynesville when it comes to football, that's for sure. We've got three youth league teams playing today in, in uh, semifinals, I think. So we're, 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 you know, good. like I said, good things happening. Um, really good positive energy around the around the whole town when it comes to, to athletics in general. Uh, the whole point to that is, again, I'm going to emphasize this. You continue to respect the, the rivalry, you'll benefit it in the end. I say to the other side, get back to respecting the rivalry. It's so special. And if you do, it'll be the win or lose. It'll be the greatest rivalry again. But if you start to disrespect it, that's when it's going to lose its luster. That's when it's going to lose its luster is when you start disrespecting the rivalry. Oh, and Alexa, not- we got we to gotta go here in just a second because I got a, another – Paul, I got to take. Um, but what was really cool for me, he he was our receiver coach when I was in high school, and he is now on Pisgah staff. But Coach Ben Rodon, or being able to go give him a hug before the game and after the game, and like we both said, we're middle of the game. I, I want to, I want to beat the crap out of you. But after the game, I'm gonna come give you a hug regardless because we still at, after that we can still go back to our normal life um, living in the same community. So that was what was cool about um, being able to see uh, coach road after the game. And I'd never actually met his, his little boy. And that was, that was fun being able to be introduced to him last night after the game. Um, so that that's, that's what this stuff's about. We can have fun and talk smack and do all this stuff. Bottom line is we live in one community, right? two schools, in one community. Yes, one's got to win, one's got to lose, but we still got to see each other for 365 days a year. Um, go to church with each other, go to work with each other. You know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. That that's what it's about. Being able to 
after the game, walk across there, look them in the eye, shake their hand, give them a hug, play a hell of a game, pat them on the on the back, see you next year, right? That type of stuff. And that was what was special for me with Coach Rodon. Got it. And uh, anyway, big, 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 big game over in Jackson County Friday. We need to travel well. We need to get out there early. Uh, a great, it's going to be a great environment, uh, and and uh, a lot on the line football wise. Just a ton on the line. And Chuck and I will be back on Tuesday night to uh, talk about a little uh, more about tonight and and looking forward to uh, next Friday night and and talk about the Mountain Seven. Also, uh, uh, we'll talk about our uh, sad ending to our baseball season and uh, some and college football. Can I, it was brought to my attention, all the teams in the postseason for baseball that had the week by, the week off, do you know what their overall record was? Pretty bad. Not good. One in 12. Yep. And then we talked about that. We, we talked about that before it happened. But anyway, everybody have a great Saturday. Everybody have a great week. Uh, remember that this is just a game now. We have to get ready. These kids got to get ready. We got they got to focus, and uh, uh, the biggest game of the season is coming up Friday. Well, the next game is always the biggest. Yep, game. and that's it. That's what I said. So, so well, uh, Elma College Scots, number one scoring off in the country in all divisions, sixty nine point three point. Go Elma. That's it. So everybody, thank you, Chuck. Hang on for just a minute when we all get right. off here. Uh, have a blessed week, everybody. And uh, see you guys on Tuesday night. Uh, it's uh, we we've changed our to seven o'clock. We're not coming on at seven thirty. We're coming on at seven o'clock. So we'll see you on the David and Chuck show. And again, God bless. Uh, congratulations to to everybody uh, in 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 the program and everybody at the school. Uh,